woodwind sounds here in GarageBand. Are they any good? How do you use them? Let's jump in and take a look. So we're here in GarageBand, we've gone to our keyboard instrument and we're going to tap on the more sounds button down here. This is going to give us all of our main categories, or in fact, you need to tap here to go back to the main categories here. And what you'll notice here is you've got your keyboards, your alchemy synth, your synth classics, your synth bass, your synth leads, your synth pad, your FX, and your other. And it's the other that I want to point you towards because this is where a lot of cool sounds are actually hidden. And today we're looking at your woodwind, which is uh, going to include these. Or, well, wind in general, really, because the flute's not technically woodwind. But we're going to look at the flute, the clarinet, the oboe, and the bassoon because we're going to be able to create some cool sounds with these. Now, let's let's do it like we would a regular track. So you'd normally start with, like, your bass instrument. You'd layer it up through some sort of pads, and then you put some melody over the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay down a bassoon track as our bass sound with then going to use oboe and clarinet to create a bit of a, a nice sort of harmony pad and then the flute's going to do the heavy lifting at the top and we're going to try and create ourselves a little uh, a little ditty here so we'll tap on bassoon and you're going to get this one there's your bassoon instrument if we tap here it's actually a pretty nicely sampled sound now the only controls we have here are your attack and your release with something like this you generally want your attack to be right on there unless you're doing like a pad sound because if you put the attack up like this Maybe you want that effect. I tend to want, uh, if I'm doing like a bass sound, I want it to hit right on the bass. And the same with the release, I'll put that around the middle. So I don't tend to touch much of that, but you can adjust that if you want to. Now, like most of our instruments on here, we can play it as an individual note here, or we can tap on the chord strip and go into chords view, which is a little bit weird when you're using a single note instrument, like a monophonic instrument. So as opposed to other instruments that may be polyphonic, Something like a bassoon is monophonic. But we can also use something called autoplay. Yeah, you know it's here. Autoplay. So if we wanted to tap on this one. That's a pretty cool one. Autoplay. I don't mind that. Maybe we can build something around that. With autoplay, don't forget that you can tap with one finger. Let's just, in some of these instruments, if you tap with two fingers, you get something different. Let's tap two fingers on there. No, it's the same. And what about three fingers? No. So in this case, with the bassoon, we've only got our four autoplay. So you've got one, two, three, four. You can choose a different one and you autoplay it. That one's not bad. We, we might use some of those more fancy autoplays for some of our other tunes. But let's just go with this one for now. And we're going to use a C chord because we're lazy. And we're going to make this in C. We can change it afterwards, but let's do it in C. So... I'll, I'll extend this out because I actually want to do 16 bars with this one just to give us a little bit more room. So if you didn't know to change the number of bars, you just tap in the little plus button. It's a little bit hidden here and then you can change the number of bars in each section. You can also add sections. If you want to learn more about sections and how to use them in GarageBand, plenty of videos here on the channel. Just search my name, Pete John's Sections, and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's, uh, let's set up here. We can record this now. I'm just going to record a little progression. I'm going to do a C... Let's do a C, F, G, A minor, C, or something like that. We'll make it up as we go along. So we'll hit record and hit C. Actually, let's go to G. And then let's go to A minor. And then F. So we've got C, G, A minor, F. It's a very simple chord progression. We just want to build out something here to demonstrate these. So it sounds pretty cool, yeah? Like your bassoon sound there. Now, like most things here, if we want to loop it across and do the same thing again for this one, we tap it and we loop it. And there you go. We've built out our nice, a nice little bottom end. And now we can build up on top of that. So that's, that's our bass, our bassoon bass here. We can then hit the plus button here. Let's add in another instrument. Let's go more sounds. We're going to go other. And let's add in an oboe. The oboe, I actually have used this in a few tracks. In my song, Drinking With You, that has the oboe as the... As, as a sort of lead instrument playing a few little things in there. So um, so let's let's play something in here now with... Something like that, I think. So I'm just going to make something up that goes with that chord progression and play it in manually this time. So you can build, you can use autoplay and then you can use something manual here to sort of uh, complement it. So we'll hit record and... Thank you. 
there we go. So we've built that out there. That's our second instrument. And it's really fun. Again, if you've never multi-tracked like this and just played around with different sounds, different melodies, different harmonies, it can be really, really interesting. So we're going to use this one. We're going to loop it out. And now we've got two different sounds. One thing that you'll get into when you start recording manually is you may want to quantize your performance. So uh, what we do to do that is on the second one, we tap on our little mixer icon there. We come down to our track settings and we hit quantization, which is this one here. And we've got none on at the moment. If we put straight quantization, say we wanted to just put a little light bit of quantization, we do one sixteenth note. This is just going to nudge the start of these notes to the right position. So if we play it now, and you can hear there, it's actually turned, put them a little bit off because this has sort of got a swing rhythm. So what I would actually do is I'd do it swing and I'd do a light swing quantization if I wanted to quantize this at all. So it sounds more in the pocket like this. Hear how that one hit more on the sound because it's not really hitting right on there. So that's, uh, that's how you quantize. If you're starting to do something like this with any sort of instruments and they're not sounding like they're in time or on the grid, you can quantize them up. Let's add our next instrument. We'll come in here. We'll go to our more sounds again. And this time we're going to use the clarinet. And now we're going to create this sort of counter melody to go with our... So because we started on a C, we're actually going to start on an E with our clarinet which is going to complete the going to complete that triad there. So I'm sorry I didn't I didn't say I didn't warn you that there'd be theory involved here today. So let's just record something in with this clarinet. So we'll hit the record button again and we'll play. I got the wrong key there. We'll try that one one more time. There you go. We've put a clarinet in there. We're creating something very unique here. A little bit of something. All right. So we've got that, our first eight bars. We're going to then loop those over again. So it's going to repeat through there. Now, there's one note in there that I wasn't particularly happy with. It was that second to last one. So what I'm going to do is tap on here and hit the edit button because, yeah, we can play this in. If you make a mistake, you don't have to do it all again. You can edit it. So I reckon it's this last note here. So let's just play this back and see what it sounds like all together. <laughs> so that note there, it kind of works with the chord, but I reckon... I reckon if we bring it down there, it's actually going to sound better. Let's just play this back now. And all you have to do to do that is tap it and drag it. So let's play this again. Yeah, I reckon I'm happy with that. Now what we can do, we can grab some flute. So our flute sounds really cool. So these, these sounds, again, they're all free. They're all here in GarageBand. And you don't have to use them all in every track, but you can see the power of this here that you might want to add in something to do a cool counter melody in something. So... Let's, let's do something up here with the flute. But let's just see if our autoplay is going to work with this now. So if we tap on our chord strip view and we go this number one autoplay that we did before, let's see what this is going to sound like. So yeah, we could use this one. Uh, or let's just try, if we go really wacky and go to number four, is this going to work in with our, with our arrangement? It might do. What about number three? Let's just try number three and see if it works in there. So we're going to hit record here. And again, all you need to do when you're using this is tap on each one of these and you need to tap it just before it hits the next bar. If you want to do a chord change, remember, don't do it right on the bar or it'll miss and it'll start playing the old note and then it'll try and change to the new note. So we'll try this now. We'll hit record and I'll try to remember the chord sequence. <laughs> Okay. 
There you go. So that is our four wind instruments together here in GarageBand. That was a super quick demo here, just so that you could hear what they sound like, that they're actually pretty darn cool. And if you're using these to complement your tracks, then you're gonna get some good sounds here. The last thing I'll show here is that we can, of course, then mix these. So you may wanna just make sure that, you know, some of those flute sounds were a little bit harsh there. And the cool thing is, if you're, if you're adding like a wind ensemble to a song, move it around. So what I'd probably do is I'd probably put the bassoon, like we'll just move this, we'll pan this one slightly to the left, we'll pan our oboe slightly to the right, we'll then grab our clarinet and push this one further to the left and grab our flute and push it further to the right. And if you're listening on a stereo speakers or headphones, then you can hit play on this one. So yeah, you can create a pretty cool sort of stereo spectrum there with your instruments. And of course, like everything else, you can come into plugins and EQ, you can change your EQ, you can add plugins to add different effects and do everything there. But who would have thought that in your, on your phone or your iPad, you would have this sort of flexibility to have some free and pretty darn cool wind sounds in here. And don't forget that there's a heap of other sounds in there as well. If you come into your keyboard, you go to more sounds and you go down to other, uh, then you've got all of these. You've got your brass ensemble, your pizzicato strings, you've got a glockenspiel, you've got your world instruments, and you've even got guitars that you can play there on the keyboard.